Hi, I'm Corey Joel with CJ and in today's video we will be talking about Riders of Rohan deck and seeing is this deck worth it. In this deck the commander is Iwani Shield Maiden. For two blue, red and a white you get a legendary creature, Human Knight, that is a mythic. She has first strike. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if another human ended the battlefield under your control this turn, create two 2-2 two, two red human knight creature tokens with trample and haste. Then if there are six or more humans, draw a card and it is a 5-4. When it comes to this deck, it seems to be very obvious on how to play it. The whole point of the deck is to play as many humans as possible to be able to then draw more humans, to then hopefully be able to have enough card in your hand to then play more humans and then attack with a large amount of creatures that are humans, that power up other humans and have trampled so you're able to, even if a load of your tokens or creatures die, there is still damage going through. So this seems to be a really big board state that you're able to attack and then pop one or two people off and then hopefully have enough to be able to block where there is some cards that I think they should be in. I know there isn't this card, but there is an uncommon I know that gives plus one, plus one in vigilance to tokens, which would have been a really good, but kind of somewhat broken card because if you have a large army of human, you then get to attack and still have blockers. So I do think that would be a really good card for this deck. And when it comes to all these decks, there is also a sub commander and that sub commander is Aragorn King of Gondor for one blue red and a white you get a legendary creature human noble that is a mythic it has vigilance and lifelink whenever Aragorn King of Gordon enters the battlefield you become the monarch whenever Aragorn attacks up to one target creature can't block this turn if you are the monarch creatures can't block this turn and he is a 4-4 Personally, I think this commander is better than the original. For one less mana, you get a creature with not one ability, but two. And personally, I think both are better than First Strike. A better way to draw, even though it will be harder, but if you're making a mass amount of tokens, should be easier to keep. And then an ability where the only downside is, is that this creature has one less power. But overall, I think is a better commander out of the two. So now I'll be going over the main parts of the deck and then overall giving a is this deck worth it overall to buy. The first thing I'll be going over are the creatures. In this deck there are 31 creatures and 26 of them are humans. Where usually when they come with a tribal deck that usually comes out, they're not really actually fully tribal. There's usually a lot of cards. Now don't get me wrong, there is a few spirits and stuff, but it's usually we'll say maybe 50 60 percent of the card type and then the rest not where this is a high percentage when it comes to these decks i'm finding that each year they are kind of making uh, standard decks maybe not better however they're making it more consistent and actually a better product but as always there are some cards that i think are really really good when it comes to these decks and they are baragond of the guard lossen arch captain eomer king of rohan Faramir, Steward of Gondor, Riders of Rohan, Weathered Wayfarer, Fortier Warmonger, Prince Imrahil the Fair. In this deck there are six enchantments but I'm only going to be going over three of them. However there is one card I cannot remember the name from the top of my head but it's that white token doubler which I think would go really well in this deck. However that card from my knowledge is over 20 quid. So I know that's probably not in there because of that reason. But the three enchantments I do want to talk about are Feltry to the Realm, Oath of Earl, Court of Ear. Now we are on to the sorceries. When it comes to this deck, there are seven in total, but I only really want to talk about four. One of the cards in here are really, really good. That personally, I think is a game ender in the right circumstances. Can you guess which one that card is? And here they are on screen now. Taunt from the Rampart, Increasing Devotion, Visions of Glory, Sunset Revelry. Next are the Artifacts. In this deck there are 12 Artifacts but 7 of them are Mana Rocks like your Sol Ring and Talismans and stuff like that. However there were 5 that were not so I'm just going to go over them 5 and them 5 are Crown of Gondor, Door of Destinies, Vanquisher's Banner, Hero Looms Blade, Herald's Horn, and then next we have the instances of the deck. There is four of them in total. However, two of them are just kind of target exile cards. But the other two are quite interesting. So I thought I'll mention them. And they are 
Unbreakable Formation, Lost to Legend, and then finally we are on to the lands. In this deck there is 38 lands and a few of them are quite good. I do think they are getting better when it comes to the lands. However, I do think they can be better. But depending on the price of the deck, I will see if it's worth it or not. But the lands I do want to mention are lands like Clifftop Retreat, Fury Calm Snarl, Glacial Fortress, Port Town, Pierre Stream, Rogue's Passage, Sulphur Falls. So overall, what are my thoughts on this deck? Personally, I think the sub commander is a lot better than the commander. However, with the commander, there is kind of two ways to play, even though you will have to change the deck a lot. I do think it would be good to be able to have the commander as kind of a Voltron-y deck, but that's mainly because of the first strike and then being able to cast two humans to power up your commander and then hopefully get the blockers needed with her second ability. And then I find the sub commander is really good as just a one type of play. There's probably other ways to play it, but it seems to be a lot harder. When it comes to the cards overall in the deck, I'm happy that there is actually a lot of humans in the deck. And looking over them, a lot of them are really good. My only personal problem is there seems to be a like a few cards in the deck that give you additional combat phases. Personally, I would rather token doublers or activate or ETB triggers twice, but that's just the way I personally play. If you are into decks that have a large army, this deck seems to actually be one of the better ones in my opinion when it comes to a standard deck that seems to just be make an army and then attack. The second one being the elf one from uh, Cal Time, and even then this seems to be a better version of it. As always, there's a lot of good cards, I think, in this deck. There is a few cards I would personally take out and put in. However, I know with probably the restrictions, they cannot do that. Overall, I think this is a deck that is actually worth it and that people should buy. Hi, I'm Cory Joe, we see you in today's video. We will be seeing if Food and Fellow Lord of the Rings Commander deck, is it worth it? So the whole point of this deck is it seems that he needs to create food tokens to then power up Frodo and then Frodo does the main damage, uh, which is a really good combination. It seems to be if anyone plays League or anything like that, that uh, Frodo is the ADC while Sam is the support. And that's what I like about partner command is that one is the main one and the other one is there to support it. Frodo Adventurous Hobbit for white and black. You've got a legendary creature, Halfling Scout. That is a mythic partner with Sam Loyal Assistant. He has Vigilance. Whenever Frodo Avengers Hobbit attacks, if you gain three or more life this turn, the ring tempts you. Then if Frodo is your ring bearer and the ring has tempted you two or more times this game, draw a card and he is a 1-3. Sam Loyal Intendant. For one green and a white, you get a legendary creature, Halfling Peasant, that is a mythic. Partner with Frodo Avengers Hobbit. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a food token. Activated ability of foods you control costs one less to activate and he is a two fall. And then on the website where I got all my information when it comes to the deck, it seems to be that there is also two other commanders, one of them being partners as well. So I'm just going to go over them now as well. So the other one is Bilbo Birthday Celebrant for a white, black and a green. You get a legendary creature, halfling rogue that is a rare. If you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead. For two white, black and a green and tap it, exile Bilbo Birthday Celebrant, search your library for any number of creature cards, put them on the battlefield then shuffle, activate only if you have 111 or more life, and he is a 2-3. I love this card so much, I think it is a great commander, it is really good with life gain, because every time you gain life gain you get an additional life, and then that, I'll call it an ult, because it is that powerful, is really really good, but there was only one card I could think of from the top of my head, that if I did that ability, I would play it on the end of someone else's turn, the person before me and it would be this card here and then because of that card I would instantly win the game on my turn so for having enough life and enough mana you don't really need to get your entire deck out on the field which is a good thing with this deck however it will be annoying to reshuffle the deck after using its ability but with this one card you will only need to put the one card on the field and then your deck seems like relatively not organized. And then the next ones are, and I actually really do like these, is the partner commanders. 
one of the partners seems to make one one creatures and then the other one seems to then make them into four fours which is a really good combination together especially since the one ones have really cool abilities and i can see this deck actually being really really powerful especially with the cards that is also in the deck Mary Warden of Isgard. For one green and a white, you get a legendary creature. Halfling Advisor, that is a rare. Partner with Pippin Warden of Isgard. Whenever one or more artifacts enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1 1 white soldier creature token with lifelink. This ability triggers once each turn, and he is a 1 4. Pippin Warden of Isgard. For a black and green, you get a legendary creature. Halfling Advisor, that is a rare. Partner with Mary Warden of Isgard. Tap one and it, create a food token. Tap it, sacrifice for food. Other creatures you control get plus three, plus three and give haste until end of turn. Activate this only as a sorcery and he is a two, two. So in this deck, there is 33 creatures. The whole point of these creatures seem to be one of three categories. It seems to be rather making food, powering up your creatures or gaining life. There are a lot of great creatures in this deck, such as the gaffer, Guan here, Greatest of Eagles, Golem Obsessed Stalker, Rapacurus Guest, Banquet Guests, Farmer of Cotton, Treebeard Gracious Host, and now we are on to the artifacts in this deck. When it comes to this deck, there is nine artifacts in total, five of them being Mana Rock, so I'm just going to go over the other four, and they are Field Tested Frying Pan, Hithlane Rope, Trading Post, Well of Lost Dreams, and when it comes to the enchantments, there is five in total, but only three that I think are actually worth talking about. And those enchantments are Of Herbs and Stewed Rabbit, Assemble the Entmoot, Call for Unity. And in this deck, there is a total of eight sorceries. However, four of them I actually think are very good and important to talk about. And then four are Fell the Mighty, Fumigate, Toxic Deluge, Revive the Shrine, and then next we are on the instances in the deck. There are six in total. However, they're all mainly target exile cards, except for one, and that card is Crypt Insertion. And then finally, when it comes to this deck, there is a total of 38 lands and a really surprisingly good amount of cards in here that are very powerful lands. And those lands are Canopy Vista, Fortified Village, Isolated Chapel, Necro Blossom Snarl, Sunset Citadel, Shrine Shadow Schnarl, Sun Petal Grove, Woodland Cemetery. Overall, I love this deck. I really do like that there is technically three commanders when it comes to this deck and all played somewhat differently. I really like when they come up with new abilities or new ways to play a commander. And when it comes to the deck itself, the deck seems to be very well structured to go along with any of the three commanders. I find when they make a lot of decks like this, with a second commander in it, it seems to be like it works well for 80% of one of the commanders and then like 20% for the other, where this seems to be no matter which commander you pick out the three, or if you want to be specific, five, it seems to be really good with each one working the way you kind of want it to. To be honest, out of all of them, personally, this is the one I would buy myself because I think this deck is absolutely amazing. I find the weakest part of the deck is the instances, but there is a few instances I would rather replace for it, but that's just me. But another good thing about this deck is if you want to build a deck similar to this, this is a really good what I call skeleton deck, mainly because if you have a commander that you want to build that does something similar to these three, this deck seems worth it enough even to just use the parts to start a brand new commander deck. But as always, let me know what you think of this deck in the comments down below. If there was any cards you would like to add or take out, also let me know in the comments down below. While you're there, remember to like and subscribe and follow me on all my social media. And I will see you all in the next video. Hi everyone, I'm Cory Joel, we CJ, and in today's video we will be going over the Lord of the Rings Elf Council Commander deck. Now when it comes to this video I will not be going over the deck in its entirety, I'll be going over my personal thoughts and opinions of the deck, the best cards, and then at the end giving an overall view of if I thought the deck is worth buying or not. If you want to see the deck in its entirety or where I get all my information, the link is in the box below, so go have a look if you want. So when it comes to this deck, the commander is Galadriel Elven Queen for two green and a blue. You get a legendary creature, Elf Noble, that is a mythic. 
she has will of the council at the beginning of combat on your turn if an elf entered the battlefield under your control this turn starting with you each player votes for dominion or guardians if dominion gets more votes the ring tempts you then you put a 1-1 counter on your ring bearer if guardians gets more votes or the votes tied draw a card and she's a 4-5 and with all these decks there is a sub commander and that sub commander is Gandalf Westward Voyager for three green and a blue you get a legendary creature avatar wizard that is a mythic whenever you cast a spell with mana value five or greater each opponent reveals the top card of their library if any of the cards share a card type with that spell copy the spell you may choose a new target for the copy and each opponent draws a card otherwise you draw a card and there's a five five so just looking at the commanders the deck seems to be that it's really interested in big creatures and 1-1 one -one counters because that's kind of what the deck or the two commanders care for and it's Simic so it's probably going to be strong because it's very difficult to kind of make a weak Simic deck not impossible but it is very easy to make a very powerful Simic deck in my opinion I think Simic is probably the best dual colors so we're going to be starting off with the creatures in this deck in this deck there is 26 creatures in total which means there is probably going to be more instants and sorceries and artifacts than there is in any other deck because from the top of my memory the other two decks that I've gone over are usually in the 30s range when it comes to creatures so this will probably have more like enchantments, artifacts, instants or sorceries which is understandable in a Simic deck. But some of the creatures I do want to go over are RON Waver of Hope, Heldir, Liern, Lentrant, Legless Greenleaf, Meekwood Elk, Kirdan the Shipwright, Elrond of the White Council, Erosto of the Council, Radagast Wizard of Wilds, Hornet Queen. So now we are going on to the sorceries in this deck. In this deck there is 13 sorceries, however there's only 4 I really want to talk about. I found the rest really like meh or not the best. And those 4 sorceries are Rise the Policide, Travel Through Cardars, Plea for Power, Genesis Wave. Next we are going on to the instances of the deck, there is 12 of them in total but I'll only be mentioning half of them and those half are Trap the Trespassers, Galdarhrim Ambush, Windshift Slice, Sail into the West, Swan Song, Heroic Intervention and then surprisingly there is only 3 enchantments in this deck which I'm finding very very strange. There is one that I thought was pretty much like a guarantee because it is super cheap and it is the wing con so i think the reason it's not in here is the wing con is the one that if you get 20 or more counters on it and it's simic you win the game i thought that would have been in here but it is a quick card to add in but out of the three there's only two that i actually want to talk about and those two are song of iradil astrexism and then we are on to the artifacts of the deck when it comes to the artifacts of the deck there's eight in total i'm not going to be going over the mana rocks but after all of that there's only three artifacts i want to talk about and those three artifacts are lothlorian blade model of unity mirror of galadriel and then lastly out the deck there is 39 lands in total and i'll be putting on the ones that i find interesting on screen now flooded grove hinterland harbor Rejuvenating Springs, Vine Glimmer Schnarl. So overall, this is the first deck out of the ones I've done that I actually prefer the commander than the sub commander. I do like voting when it comes to this. However, I find this deck to be the weakest out, the, like all of them. When it comes to doing the research on all the decks, when I'm looking at the cards that are in them, there's some cards that I'm like, that's a good card. That's quite good and that works well with the deck however there wasn't really any with this deck i found the deck to kind of it seemed to be that they knew simic is strong they knew the stuff they could do with simic especially with the two commanders and they were afraid it was going to be more powerful than the rest by a landslide that they toned it down but they didn't really communicate well so it seems to be personally in my opinion the weakest deck out of them all because they were too afraid to add some spice in if that makes sense. Overall, eh, if you want to make an elf simic deck I can see it being good as a skeleton for that or if you want to make a voting deck I can 
picture a good amount of cards being thrown in there. However, I think just with how the commanders are ruled and the cards in it, there is a lot of blue cards and green cards and Simic cards that I could see myself building a really powerful and very strange deck that this just seems to be kind of nothing in comparison to what it should be. And I know wizards are not planning to make like six, seven, eights and plus decks. However, this seems to be very underwhelming in my personal opinion. But as always, let me know what you think of the deck in the comments down below. Let me know if there's any cards you like in this. Let me know if there's any cards you would add in or what you would do if you were building it yourself. If you make this deck on Moxfield, remember you can DM me, link me. I love seeing other people's decks. Also, all you down there, remember to like and subscribe and follow me on all my social media and all of that other stuff. And I will see you in the next video. So hi, I'm Cory Joe OECJ, and in today's video, we will be going over the last commander deck, the host of Mordor, in the Lord of the Rings commander like presets. When it comes to these decks, I will not be going over the deck in its entirety. I'll be going over cards that I think are good or cards that actually matter when it comes to the story or unique cards. But if you want to see the deck in its entirety, there is a link down below. So let's get started. When it comes to this deck, the commander of the deck is Sauron Lord of the Rings. For five blue, black and a red, you get a legendary creature, Avatar Horror, that is a mythic. When you cast this spell, amass orcs five, mill five cards, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. He has trample. Whenever a commander and opponent controls dies, the ring tempts you and he is a nine nine. And with all the other deck, there is a sub commander. And in this deck, the sub commander is Soroman the White Hand. For one blue, black and a red, you get a legendary creature, Avatar Wizard, that is a mythic. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, amass Orcs X, where X is the spell's mana value. Goblins and Orcs you control have Ward 2, and he is a 2-5. When it comes to this deck, it seems like it's going to be a Goblin or Orc Matters deck. Kind of a huge tribal deck which powers up others and I say Orc X is going to be a huge thing or Orc Mass is going to be a huge thing in this deck. With this deck I actually do prefer the commander than the sub commander which is quite rare but I do think the commander is a bit heavy on the mana when it comes to playing them. He seems to be a plan B more than a plan A but I also do think because of all the other Saurons in the like this actual set that you could easily swap this out and put in the three color or two color Sauron and make a better deck. So we will be starting off with the creatures in this deck. When it comes to this deck, there is 27 creatures in total and here are my favorites, all the ones that matter to the story. Courses of Umbar, Monstrosity of the Lake, Shelob Dreadweaver, Cavern Horde Dragon, Orcus Siege Master, Rampaging War Mammoth, The Balrag of Moria, Moria Scalvenger, Scourge of the Throne, and then next we are on to the sorceries of the deck. In this deck there are 16 sorceries in total, and a lot of them are surprisingly really good, even though they are mana heavy, but they are worth when you do get to cast them. The sorceries in this deck are very powerful, so I say there is going to be a lot of ramp or a lot of mana rocks in this deck because of how powerful the sorceries are. But when it comes to the sorceries, there's only nine I'm going to be mentioning, and those nine are Subjugate the Hobbits, Lidless Gaze, Summons of Sauron, Too Greedy Too Deep, Wake the Dragon, Decree of Pain, Living Death, Reanimate, Treason of Isgard, and now we are on to the enchantments of the deck. In this deck, there is a total of four enchantments, but I'll only be going over two of them, but I'm, I'm finding when it comes to these decks that the enchantments are the weakest in all of them. So the two I'm going to be going over are In the Darkness Binds Them, Fiery Inscription. When it comes to the artifacts of this deck, I was right in what I was going to be thinking. There is a total of eight artifacts in this deck and all of them are mana rocks. However, there is one I do want to mention because it is only in this deck that you're able to get it. So I'm just going to mention that one and that one is Relic of Sauron. Next are instances in this deck. When it comes to this deck, there is a total of six instances and I find actually out of this entire deck, the instance to be the really, really weakest part of this deck as a total. I'm really shocked how bad these are. However, I do need to mention some of them. So here are some on screen now. Bitter Downfall, Fact or Fiction, Thrill of Possibility, 
And then finally, the lands of the deck. In this deck, there is 38 lands, and a lot of them are surprisingly good. And I always love that when there is a three color commander deck, they do add a triumph. So I'm gonna be going over the lands I think are good in this deck. And those lands are the Black Gate, Desolent Lighthouse, Dragon Skull Summit, Drowned Catacomb, Frost Boiled Schnarl, Smothering Marsh, Sulphur Falls, Sunken Hollow, Crumbling Necropolis. So my thoughts and opinions in this deck is a whole. I actually find the, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, there is a three color Sauron in the actual set, is a way better commander than the Sauron in this deck. I find that he is very good, but very mana heavy. So if he dies, he's kind of becomes useless. I do like Sauron, hopefully I'm saying that right, in the deck, but my th because creatures and uh, sorceries were the first things you see, I was like, this deck is gonna be really good and really spicy. However, with the instances in the deck and the artifacts and enchantments in this deck, going through this video, it kind of got my hopes up, hopes up, hopes up, and then just plummeted straight down. I do think if you want to build this deck, you will have to do a lot of changes to make it somewhat good. I do think it is able to win or lose a game, but with how there's like decks that with ramp and fast mana and stuff like that. I do think winning with this deck in a, we'll say a normal game would be very rare unless you've upgraded it quite heavily. But they're my thoughts and opinions on this commander deck. Let me know what you think of this deck in the comments down below. While you're down there, remember to like, subscribe, follow me on all my social media and share this video. And I will see you all in the next video.